Hi, this is Pete Lyons with Let's Play Salesforce, and today we're doing part one of Dataflow Basics. We're going to cover simple joins using the Dataflow Editor. So to get to the uh, Dataflow Editor, I'm going to start by clicking the gear in the top right here, selecting Data Manager. Then I'm going to click on Data Flows and Recipes. If this is a brand new implementation, odds are you're only going to have the default data flow. Um, I'm going to open up data flow number five here, which is blank. And I'm going to start by grabbing an SFDC digest node. It's going to allow me to pull in data from a Salesforce object. So I'm going to name my node get uh, opties. Continue. Source object is going to be opportunity. And then for the fields parameter, this is going to determine what fields uh, I'm pulling from opportunity. So I'm going to grab the account ID, I'm going to grab the amount, uh, let's see, I'll grab uh, stage, and uh, let's see, probability, yeah, what do we got so far? So I can check the outputs field, output fields tab to see uh, what I got so far, account, amount, probability, stage name, and uh, might as well grab the opti name. Um, next, uh, incremental update involved replication. We're going to leave that alone for now. Uh, filter conditions takes uh, JSON filter parameters to allow you to only pull uh, certain opties. For example, if you have legacy data that you don't want to pull in or uh, if you only want to pull a certain record type. Uh, complex filter conditions works the same way, but it takes a SQL uh, where clause as the filter condition. But we're not going to worry about that for now. All we really need is the source object and the fields that we're going to be grabbing. Now, if we were to save this data flow, that alone is not enough because we've told the system to go and get information, but we haven't told it what to do with it. So next, we're going to need to, at a minimum, uh, register this data flow. And we're going to call this register opties. So our source node is going to be get opties for our alias, we'll say and for our name, so this is uh, API and label. Next is uh, sharing source. This allows me to declare a Salesforce object to inherit row level security from. Uh, this is capped currently at 2,000 rows. This is released as of winter 18. Uh, so at the time of this video, uh, it's, it's a little limited. Um, we're hoping to see increases to this in the future. Security predicate also involves row-level security and takes uh, SACWL syntax to determine uh, who can see what. Uh, we're not going to be doing that at this time. We're just uh, grabbing our data right here. So we register that. Now, because the data flow is a chain, we can see that it starts with get opties extracting the data from Salesforce and then register opties. So now we're going to hit update data flow. And this on its own is going to do absolutely nothing. We are not actually creating any data sets doing this. We are merely saving uh, the data flow definition. This is a set of instructions that will um, execute when we tell the data flow to run. And that's what's actually going to create our data sets. So to do that, we have to go back to the data manager, click the little drop down next to uh, our data flow, and hit start. So if we want to watch uh, its progress, we can go over to the monitor. We can see that it's running. We can hit this little plus sign to expand. It's going to tell us uh, where it is uh, and at what node it's at. Uh, we can refresh that here and see that it's already completed. So we've digested 708 rows of opportunity data. Now let's take a look at how that actually turns out as a data set. Pete's Opties. Now by default, they're going to be stored in the shared app. And uh, if I wanted to move them, I could edit the data set. We're not going to do that at this time. So let's just take a look at what was created. I'm going to kick over to the values table mode. So it seems like we got all the fields, but you know, what I really don't like here is I really was hoping to get the account name. So what we're going to actually need to do is extract the account separately and join it on to this table. And that's going to allow us to actually see information about the account that's related to it. So let's go ahead and do that. So we're going to go back into our data flow and we're going to add another digest where we're going to pull in information about the accounts. So our source object is account and we're going to grab let's see, name, industry, and owner. Hit save. And now 
we're going to use an augment transformation to join them together. Everybody I know hates it when I used the uh, number two instead of the word T-O. So our left source is going to represent the child object. That's going to be our base grain. So in this case, uh, we have a one-to-many relationship between account and opportunity. And so in a simple join, we're going to have the opportunity, which is at the lower grain, be our left source. So get opties. And our left key is going to declare the field, the column that we expect to match on our right, uh, right table. So we're going to say that that's the account ID because that's how we identify our accounts. Then the relationship, uh, this is going to add a path, kind of like how in Salesforce formula fields you would have like double underscore R. Uh, we're going to say account. And we'll see how that manifests later on. Next, we're going to choose the right source, which is going to be get account. And the right key is going to be the ID, which I did not grab. So now I'm going to go back to the account. I'm going to add ID. So we can't join to it if we don't have it. So I'm going to change that right key to ID. And then for my right fields, I'm going to select the fields that I want to bring down onto here. Uh, the operator of uh, lookup multi or lookup single value is for advanced stuff. We're going to leave that alone for now. And we'll look at some of the output fields that we're going to get. These are all the different fields. Now notice uh, we had said the relationship name was account. So the field name for the industry is going to be account.industry. So go ahead and click save. Now if we were to register this, uh, we're still not going to see any change because the register opties is still taking get opti as its source instead of uh, this join over here. So we need to go into here and change its source. So we change its source to join account to opties. Now we see that the two different data sets are being joined together through this augment and then registered here. So let's go ahead and update our data flow definition. Go to our data manager, data flows and recipes, click the caret and hit start. Take a look and watch the progress in our data monitor. I like to just spam the button. We can see the data flow took 26 seconds. You can see how long each of the different transformations took. Final register less than uh, just about a second. We've got a thousand rows of account data and 700 rows of Opti data. So now let's take a look at how that appears uh, over in Wave. So we're going to close out of this table because that's still showing us the data set before we um, last ran the data flow since it was already open. We're just going to reopen it. We'll go back to the values table. And I've got a couple extra fields here. There we go. So now I've got the account industry. Uh, I still have the account ID. I don't really need to see it on this table. You can see my stage, my account dot name account owner dot ID well I was kinda hoping to have the owner on here uh, how would I resolve that well I would do the exact same thing I did to join the account on and I would join down the owner onto the account before doing this amount probability opti name so now one thing to call out though so let's do a quick grouping here um, or a quick uh, bar chart and let's do unique account IDs. So now I have 496 unique account IDs in this data set. So why do I why do I need to draw attention to that? Well the thing is I digested just over a thousand accounts. So why is it that you know I only have uh, 496 uh, unique account IDs? Well the reason for that is because since we're using keys to join our tables together any accounts that don't have opportunities aren't going to have any rows to join onto and will not be represented in the final data set. Now, there are ways to get around this. For example, uh, check out my uh, advanced data modeling series where in part one I cover exactly this, how to do parents with or without children. But just be aware that the default behavior on symbol joins is that you will not see parents that do not have children. So that concludes this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, please uh, like, subscribe, tell a friend, and uh, as always, thanks for watching.